Hello, welcome to Podcast vs. Player. Today we have another review. This time we are looking at the Nixie Hyperion Pro controllers for the Nintendo Switch. These were very kindly sent to us by Nixie Gaming, but in no way influenced what I think of the product. The Nintendo Switch has been a big hit among gamers across the world since it launched, amassing over 139 million sales. But there's one thing mostly everyone will agree is a huge negative, and that's the tiny Joy-Cons. Sure, they work, but they're also uncomfortable to anyone with large hands. They suffer drift easily. I've personally gone through over six pairs of Joy-Cons, but Nixie aims to solve this with the Hyperion Pro. So the Hyperion Pro comes in two styles, a green Legend of Zelda inspired color and a purple GameCube inspired controller. We were sent the purple variant and it looks beautiful. It genuinely really does. The purple really punches and with the light gray left analog stick and the right yellow one, complete with the green and red A and B buttons, it really looks the part and it does a great job of bringing that GameCube design to a more modern console. Now, obviously, it's easy for a controller to look good, but it needs to feel good in the hands as well. Luckily, the Hyperion Pro feels fantastic. And just taking them out of the box, they're a big step up from the Joy-Cons. The design of the Hyperion Pro allows for a super comfortable ergonomic grip for long gaming sessions when connected to the Switch, and also comes with a middle grip to give the ability to be used while the Switch is in docked mode, so you can still use it when you're playing on your TV. When holding the Hyperion Pro, your thumbs sit very naturally, giving it easy access to both analog sticks and the face buttons, while also being able to reach the D-pad without stretching. If you've been used to a stock Joy-Con experience, then these will really impress in terms of comfort. These are the most comfortable controllers I've used on the Switch to date. Apart from the miniature design of the stock Joy-Con, the biggest problem is how quickly they develop the dreaded drifting. The Hyperion Pro features two full-sized Hall Effect joysticks. These not only feel great, but they'll not develop any drifting. As instead of conventional joysticks, they use magnets and electrical conductors to measure their position, distance and movement when in use. They have no physical contact between the moving parts, which means they should never develop the dreaded drift. The D-pad is nice and firm with a satisfying click and is generally one of the best D-pads I've used, which is great for playing old school games on the Nintendo store. Whilst the face buttons all feel nice, with no mush at all, no pre or post travel, and are very responsive. As well as the usual buttons found on a Joy-Con, there's also a turbo button on each, and that also lets you change the RGB when clicked with either R3 or L3, which will cycle through the options around the analog sticks and the strips on the left and the right side of the Joy-Cons. There's also a variety of RGB colors as well as a breathing mode, or you can turn them off. Flicking the analog up or down will also change the brightness of the lights. The bumpers and trigger buttons feel solid and are easy to reach no matter the size of your hands. On the back of the controllers, you'll find the unlock buttons that allow you to attach or detach and some extra features you won't find on the stock Joy-Cons. Both the left and right feature a macro button, Nixie called Gamer's Reflex, and a rumble button. These allow you to program a button and increase or decrease the rumble respectively, as well as an ML button on the left and an MR on the right. So by holding the M button, you can create macros which will be stored on either the ML or the MR button, depending on which Joy-Con you're using. But using the Hyperion Pro on the Switch OLED, the additional weight of 170 grams compared to the 104.2 grams of the stock Joy-Con sounds a lot, but in real world usage, it doesn't feel noticeably heavier, but it certainly feels more premium but not uncomfortable or heavy. An added bonus is the switch still fits in the dock with the Hyperion Pro still attached, which is a massive bonus for charging. Although each side also has its own USB port if you'd like to charge them out of the dock. So from just the feel alone, Hyperion Pro makes playing Switch games way more comfortable and easier to do, particularly if you have large hands. Everything about the Hyperion Pro in terms of how it sits in your hands, the placement and access of the buttons, it all adds to a much more satisfying gameplay experience compared to the stock Joy-Cons. Now for all the many praises, there are some trade-offs to be had. As with most third-party Joy-Cons, Hyperion Pro does not have HD rumble or NFC, so any games you frequently play that make use of these will have limited functionality. Hyperion Pro does allow you to change the vibration range from 0% up to 100, but bear in mind usage may vary from game to game. There is 6-axis functionality for motion control, however, so any games that require that are still good to go. So while the lack of HD rumble and NFC are undoubtedly a shame, the Hyperion Pro is still the best Joy-Con replacement I've tested to date. 
They look fantastic, they feel better than stock Joy-Cons, and the Hall effect sticks and show the longevity of them will outlast Nintendo's offerings, as well as other third-party brands that still suffer with the dreaded drift issue. They're super comfortable, and ergonomic grip allows for easy long-term gaming sessions. The programmable RGB lights mean you can customise the controller to your particular taste, and the gamer's reflex macro buttons are available to give you that little extra edge. Plus, the GameCube-inspired purple option and the green Legend of Zelda-inspired variant really make the controllers stand out. Now, if you want to see more, there's a full review over on podcastversusplayer.com, as well as other reviews and other things such as podcasts and Let's Plays. So go check them out, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye!